Hi, I'm Tim Enriquez with the National Personal Training Institute. The purpose of today's video is to go over a variety of movements that the human body is capable of, and so students can have a study guide in terms of how the body moves and what movement is being produced. So we're going to go through each joint, uh, and we're going to essentially look at each movement that each joint is capable of doing. I'll do it twice and verbally say and demonstrate the movement at the same time. So we're going to start our position of reference as anatomical position. So we're here. All right, let's start with the elbow. It's the easiest joint in the body to figure out usually. So we're going to start like this, anatomical position. When we bend our elbow, that's elbow flexion. Straightening the elbow, elbow extension. Bend, flexion, straighten is extension. Our wrist can also move. We can flex the wrist, move it forward, extend the wrist, move it back. Flex and extend. Our wrist is also able to do ab and adduction. Abduction is to move away. Adduction is to move back towards. The wrist has its own midline, which is the center point. So abduction, move away either direction. Adduction, move back in line. Our fingers are capable of flexion, which is making a fist. Extension, which is straightening. Flexion and extension. Your fingers can also produce abduction, which is when you spread them. Adduction, which is push them together finger abduction, finger adduction. Moving to the trunk, the trunk refers to the core part of your body. Your trunk is able to produce trunk flexion, bending forward, trunk extension, standing upright, trunk flexion, trunk extension. Your trunk can bend to the side. This is trunk abduction, sometimes called lateral flexion and trunk adduction, back to the midline, trunk abduction, and trunk adduction. The trunk is also capable of rotation, so the trunk can rotate in either side. So this is going to be an internal rotation, rotation the same side, rotation, trunk rotation. Our uh, shoulders is the most complicated joint in the body, so it can do a variety of different actions. The shoulder can flex, which brings it forward. Shoulder flexion. Most people would stop here, however you can continue all the way up. Shoulder flexion. Shoulder extension, back to anatomical or even beyond. Shoulder flexion, lifting your arms out in front of you. Shoulder extension, coming down like a karate chop. The shoulders can produce ab and adduction. When thinking of that, it's best to think of anatomical position. Shoulder abduction is moving away from the midline. Shoulder adduction is moving back toward the midline. Shoulder abduction moving up and away. Shoulder adduction moving back towards the midline. The shoulder can also produce horizontal ab and adduction. We can't produce that in anatomical position, so we have to move first. So if we lifted our shoulders forward, as in shoulder flexion, from here, we can go horizontal abduction to move away, horizontal adduction to move together, horizontal abduction to move away, horizontal ad adduction to move together. The shoulder can also produce rotation. Internal rotation is a swiveling of the humerus towards the midline. External rotation is the same thing, but in the opposite direction easier to see when your elbows are bent. Internal rotation is like patting your stomach. External rotation is rotating out. If your arms are in this position, internal rotation is rotation downward. External rotation is rotation upwards. External rotation can also be called lateral rotation. Internal rotation can also be called medial rotation. Our neck can produce a variety of movements. Neck flexion, bend down, Neck extension, look up. We can continue to extend if we wish. Neck flexion, neck extension, neck abduction, neck adduction, neck abduction, neck adduction. The neck can rotate as well, as though you were saying no. Moving down into the lower part of the body. The hip can do everything the shoulder can. Usually the range of motion is not quite as great. So for hip 
Hip means we're moving our femur. Trunk means we're moving our trunk, our spine. So for hip, we have hip flexion, lifting our leg forward, hip extension, coming back, and it can continue to go back if we wish. Hip flexion, forward, hip extension, backwards. We can also do hip ab and adduction, hip abduction, move away, hip adduction, move back towards the midline, abduction, move away, adduction, move back towards the midline. The hip can also do horizontal ab and adduction. First we have to get in that position, so if we bring our leg forward, bend the knee to make it easier. Now we can produce horizontal abduction, horizontal adduction. So moving away from this position, horizontal ab, horizontal adduction. Your knee is similar to your elbow in that it uh, doesn't. It only does a few movements. So for the knee, I'll turn to the side so it's easier to see. The knee starts in anatomical position, so it's extended. The knee can produce knee flexion, bend, knee extension, straighten, knee flexion, knee extension. Your ankle uh, is also capable of similar movements. It's going to have a little bit of a special case. Both its terms are going to be flexion because it starts in uh, not in an extended position. Plantar flexion of the ankle is raising up on your toes, working your calves. Dorsiflexion is lifting your toes up towards your knees. So plantar flexion is a pointing the feet down. Dorsiflexion, lifting your toes up. Our forearms can also supinate and pronate. In anatomical position, we are supinated. You would carry the soup in a supinated position. Pronation is when you would dump that suit out, suit out, or pro it away, if you like that one. So supinate, palms up, as though in a bicep curl. Pronation, palms down, as in a bench press.